I'm Rhonda, Director of Groundwork Arts, and today we're going to make object character paintings. Personification means taking an inanimate object, something that's not alive, like a can of seltzer, or a bag of chips, or even a stapler, and giving it human characteristics like eyes and nose, mouth, and arms and legs. And the artist Nick Karp loves painting characters and he has a painting that's a turbine a wind turbine like those in palm springs and it becomes the body of the character and he paints a face in it so like nick today we're going to take an everyday object and make it a character here's what you'll need a paper towel a paper plate a jar of water a piece of cardboard two brushes, one large and one small, and tempera paint. The first thing we need to do is pick an object, any object, any object in the room you can think of. I'm gonna pick my favorite, which is this very tall teapot. And then we're gonna take the object and develop it into a character. A character is a figure in a story. To develop your character, ask yourself, what is its physical appearance? Does it wear pleated skirt or green shoes? Does it have big eyes and pink lips? What is its emotional state? How does it feel? Is it mad, sad, or happy? And how does it move? Does it do the limbo like this banana? And what about its personality? Does it have quirks, likes, or dislikes? Maybe it loves to listen to music like this avocado. Our first step is going to be to look at our object and to paint a contour line of the outer edge of our object, not unlike a blind contour. The next step is to block out the shape. So we've painted a contour line along the outer edge of the object, and now we want to block out. And this is a technique that's used in painting um, to block out large areas of painting. And it's not about detail, it's about filling in the space of the shape and sometimes the shape can become a three-dimensional form. I chose a color that I really love for the teapot and color can convey a great deal about a character and a feeling and emotion um, but now I'm going to block out the rest of the composition with the background and maybe some additional objects and before I do that it's really important that I clean my brush between paint. So uh, blocking out is a, again a technique that's used in painting to look at the overall composition and remember we were thinking about what the story is for our object and my teapot likes to go to the beach and so I'm going to make some water. Um, I sometimes like to mix my paints um, you want to be really careful not to muddy everything. Um, and I think the water is behind her in this area. So I'm blocking out large areas and trying to get as close to the other pieces as possible. Now when you're blocking out, it's uh, large areas, it's not details. Um, so you're thinking about color and shape. So that's about where my water is. And now I'm gonna switch to background. I think I want a sunset. And I want it to be orange. You can also mix right on the board.
So my teapot's at the beach with water and a beautiful sunset, and she likes sitting on a striped beach towel. So she has a blue and white striped beach towel. So after you've blocked out your painting, your background, maybe some of the other objects in there, um, it's great to look at your object and think about where there might be some human characteristics. For me, this looks like a nose and this looks like an arm. This looks kind of like a hat or hair. And so I'm going to look at my painting and think about how I can emphasize those pieces. So you can use a small brush and black to start to outline any of the features you'd like to emphasize. Um, again, for me, this one is kind of like an arm. She has a hand on her hip, and your hand doesn't have to be fancy. It can be really simple, um, like any one of these. It can even be a, a stick hand. Small gestures can convey a lot. Uh, you could also add feet or shoes to your object. Um, I don't think my teapot has any feet, but if you wanted to, you could have a big thigh and a calf and a foot or big shoes, or just really simple stick legs. I figured out early on that I wanted this to be a nose and I'm gonna add an eye and lips. And eyes and a mouth can convey a great deal of emotion. So we have a happy face here with almond shape eye, iris and pupils, eyelashes, and a smile. To make an angry face, you simply tip the almond shape down and you can add a zigzag mouth, it's angry, a sad face, you tip the almond shape up and do an upside down smile or a frown. And for silly eyes, you can put the pupils in different locations and you can do these waves for a silly face. So she is happy. I wanna do a big round eye. I do have kind of a side view here. I want to give her um, big happy lips and I think her lips are right here. And the fun thing about this is that your character can change as you paint it. You can decide. Some beach clothes. So you can use your imagination to take any object and create a character out of it. It's really fun to make a story and your story can change as you paint. The facial features that you choose, the arm positions, the things that they're wearing, the colors that you use can convey a great deal of information about your character. So go grab a paintbrush, some paint, a board, and put a face on it.